It's early October, which means it's cold and flu season. It's all about sniffles and sneezes. Before you reach for those pharmacy drugs, why not try a natural remedy which actually works? The birch polypore. In 1991, a 5,000-year-old mummy was found frozen in the Alps. They called him Utsi, and on his person, they found a curious little mushroom called the birch polypore, or Phomatosis betulina. But why was he carrying it? It turns out this mushroom has been used medicinally for centuries. Even today, some of its medicinal benefits may just surprise you. In 1998, an anthropologist called Luigi Capasso was the first suggesting that Utsi was actually carrying it to treat his whipworm, which I imagine wasn't very pleasant. Modern research has since found that it potentially holds antimicrobial, anti-inflammatory, antioxidant properties, immune system support, wound healing, especially for burns, and antiviral properties. In 2019, it actually showed promising activity against HIV. It isn't just the medicinal benefits that this mushroom has been used for either. Back in time, here in the UK, it was actually called the razor strop fungus because barbers would actually use it to strop their razors. It's also been used to catch a spark, so in a pinch you can use it to light a fire, and it also makes a great plaster on the go if you cut yourself in the woods or something. When it comes to finding it yourself, you first need to know when to find it, where to find it, and what it looks like. Well firstly, the name is a bit of a giveaway, the birch polypore. You can find it on dead or dying birch trees. You're typically going to find the birch polypore growing between August and November. It starts off bursting out of a tree like this here. As it gets older, it turns into a bit of a hoof shape like this one here. It flattens out as it gets a bit older and flattens out more still. When they're actually much older, they can get really big and they sometimes have a bit of a wavy edge to them as well. And when you find it, you typically find quite a lot of it. It's quite rare to find just one or two if you found a birch forest with lots of them. This tree here, for example, has been taken over and if I come back next year, I'd expect it to have even more. The birch polypore, when young and fresh, has a beautiful white underside, like this one here. It has a bit of a spongy feeling to it, if anything, and the top of it has this brown-like shade over here, usually a bit darker towards the tree and lighter here. You can see here something's had a bit of a nibble on this one around the edge here, but you always want a lovely fresh one like this. You're going to come across them all old and manky. They're usually last years and you want to leave them well alone. To actually harvest them, you've got one of two options. Either break it off the tree if it's easy to do so, like that one, or you can also use a knife, which I sometimes do when they're a bit tougher. So there you have it, a harvested birch polypore mushroom. This tree here is a really good example of the type of thing you can expect to find. Down here, you've got a nice, fresh, young polypore. You could harvest that. It's still a bit small, but you know, you, I'm sure you could get away with it. This here is a nice new growth. I say nice, it actually looks like it's broken off, but I'm sure you get the idea. This one's a bit further along, again, too small. This one here, a bit further along and a nice new one over there. But this one's a really good example of what you want to leave alone. See, that is last year's growth. Probably not the year before, but who knows, it could be. But that's decidedly manky. You want to leave that alone and leave that one where it is. Here we've got some more and some more and some more and some more. This one down here is a good example of what is not a birch polypore. See, it's got a brown top, but it's completely different. And underside, it is white, but again, it's completely different. It's uh, it's quite hard for start, it's quite tough. This is a birch tree, but it's not a birch polypore. I think it's actually a young artist bracket, which is actually another medicinal mushroom, which is pretty good in its own way, but we'll save that for another day. A couple of things to keep in mind when you're out looking for the birch polypore is to look down because you're going to find it on stumps and branches and things like that. These ones down here aren't really worth harvesting, but I'm sure you get the idea. And also to look up. Now, unless you are some kind of gymnast, some of these you're going to have to leave well alone. I typically come out with the family once or twice in the autumn, specifically to forage for birch polypore. We take it home and dry it so we've got a nice supply for the autumn and winter months. I'm gonna go back indoors now, show you how we dry them, how we store them for the autumn and winter months, and how we use them.
When it comes to using the Birch Poly Pour, there's absolutely no harm with using it fresh. However, me personally, I like to chop it up and dry it. This way we can store it and use it throughout the autumn and winter months. I slice it fairly thinly so it gets a nice dry on. Myself, I have a dehydrator because I'm always drying various bits and bobs. However, there's absolutely no harm with just leaving it on a tray and leaving it for a few days. In a pinch, you can use an oven and I have done myself before. The trouble is you can get a bit of a burn on sometimes, so I prefer the dehydrator or just leaving them on the side. If you're using the dehydrator, just make sure you give all the pieces enough room to dry out nicely, no overlapping and things like that and pop it in the dehydrator for maybe about 12 hours on around 50 degrees. It really depends on your dehydrator to be honest. Just keep an eye on it, you don't want it to burn, but you want it nice and crispy. And here are some I made earlier. This is the end result. You want them like this. See how they're nice and hard like that? They're definitely dry, but not yellowy and burnt. I nearly forgot to say that you want to store your dried birch poly pool in an airtight container. If it's not airtight, the mushroom is going to start absorbing moisture from the air and it's going to go bad. So make sure your container is airtight. When it comes to treating any coughs or colds or the flu or anything like that, we always make a simple tea. I fill a pan of water, pop in a few bits of the birch poly pour and then simmer it really gently for about 40 to 45 minutes. It's important not to boil your water. I get mine to about 80 degrees and let it go about that temperature. If you've got a thermometer, use that because it's really handy just to keep an eye on it. Now I know not everyone's a massive fan of the old mushroom flavour, so you can stick some flavourings in it, like ginger or honey or something like that. In fact, yesterday we had some friends over, one of our friends was suffering from a bit of a cold, I chipped in and offered some birch poly pour tea. Now she's not a fan of mushrooms, so what I did was stick some yarrow from the garden in there and some ginger, and apparently it went down alright. So that's it, here's to a snot free winter, cheers.